All right, so we're going to call this uh, meeting to order at about um, 5.35 p.m. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, first order of business, I guess, is to congratulate and welcome our new board member, yes. Carrie Etchells. Yep. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you. Happy to be here. This is your chance now to make a big speech to the oh, public. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I decline. Uh, not mandatory. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> at the next meeting. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, the minutes for our last meeting, which was on April 4th. Make a, I guess three of us can vote on. Yep, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 4th, 2019. Second. Okay, good, so moved. And moving right along, the financial statements, Judy? Yep, um, you have a uh, total of. Oh, sorry, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 301. We met your standing since you weren't there for minutes. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, and then 10 enters. So um, you have actually 12 warrants in front of you, if I take that last one off, um, for a total of $214,952.86 to sign tonight, um, as well as those extra um, payroll warrants and the change of signatory. Can you repeat that number? Was that sure. where the change? Um, it's $214,952.86. Okay. Um, before I get into the uh, sort of financial update about things, there is one item um, and I need to bring to your attention, and that is um, we have a, a student who will be leaving uh, Deerfield Elementary who currently has an FM system. Um, the parents have requested to potentially purchase the system. However, you as a school committee need to declare it as surplus property before that can happen. What so. is uh, an acronym you use? What's an uh, FM um, system is Amplification for Hearing Impaired Student. Yeah. yeah. We've done that in the past for the old system. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, we don't want to say too much because yep. small yeah. town sure, can sure. be easily figured out. So, so. They, would, they would like to continue using this apparatus right. that helps the child. Right. Yeah. But technically, because it was purchased with taxpayer funds, you mm -hmm. have to declare it as surplus property. It has to be offered to the rest of the town departments if they decline, which I'm guessing they would. Mm -hmm. Then what we would use is a uh, straight depreciation. Um, right. You know, they have a shelf life of about five years. This was purchased two years ago, so mm -hmm. there is no need for it in the school. Yeah, um, there's no other student that needs it right, right now. Right now, okay. and so by the time somebody else comes through, technology will have changed, and you'd get another one. Right. Okay. So somebody would need to make a motion to declare an FM system uh, the value uh, that was purchased for $1,852 as surplus property. Mm -hmm. and, oh, well, I was just going to say, and so you're saying, just to be fair, I mean, mm -hmm. so uh, it likely will become obsolete. I mean, there's nobody's using it now, but if somebody came to school next year, we would year purchase they, it we would again. Mm -hmm. fit. So right. basically, in a home system, you get a hearing aid system, then it connects to to either microphone. The teachers, there's different systems that are used sometimes. Yeah. There's a tower in the room, the, the microphone mm -hmm. system, that kind of, there's all these different components that get configured to a certain thing. So okay. yeah. if someone new was to come in, we'd buy new parts for the earpieces and then configure okay. the rest of the system to it. Given the, I mean, my recommendation is fine to just let this go yeah. forward. We'll buy a new system for the next person coming through. Yeah. Um, you it's, I don't think we've normally taken this step. We've probably been, probably, yeah. if they've gone on the frontier, we traveled it along. Mm -hmm. We just kind of yeah. said frontier would pick up the maintenance costs of the system and any, any maintenance costs mm -hmm. to it. Um, so, um, and so those we have not, you haven't kind of taken any action on. We kind of, it's one of those, I guess maybe there probably could have been reimbursement to the elementary mm -hmm. to continue that moving forward. Um, we haven't. Right. Um, in this particular case, the student is not going to Frontier, at least that's the belief. Right. Um, and so therefore, the parents want to be able to take that. It's all set up perfectly yeah. for them. It's fairly easy so, for that person. So that right. kind of thing. Right. So, okay. So yeah. I just wanted to ask a <clears throat> question. And, and I would agree in two years, the technology has changed. changed. I'm going to get her with new models. That's yeah. every couple of years. So yeah. Yeah. Better personalize it, seems like. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you then. No, no. You. It sounds good. So I'll make a motion to... Um, to declare this piece of equipment um, surplus, surplus property. property. 
Okay, and then I'll reach out to the town side to see if anybody wants it, which mm -hmm. then if they don't, I'll use, um, I checked with the director of special education and they have a shelf life of about five years before the technology really changes, so we'll do a straight line depreciation. Okay, and, Jeff, great. Any further discussion? Okay. I'll second it. Well, I heard the second. Yeah, yeah. I heard the yeah, yep. second. Okay. Yeah. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. So on to the financials. You have in front of you um, the April uh, expenditure results, and then um, at the very end of um, the packet is sort of uh, again another blush at the uh, potential um, where we are right now. Um, we have done some covering of salaries on paper at least um, for. Uh, to the end of the year and have realized some significant savings in salaries in a few places. Mm -hmm. um, there are some maintenance projects um, that Bob would like to be able to do, so this frees up some cash to be able to do that. Uh, in one instance, um, because of the uh, energy grant and the replacement of the boilers, which is at no cost, mm -hmm. um, the electrical work needs to be paid for uh, because that was not part of the bid spec. So, uh, again, there's more than enough money to do that plus um, some other uh, things in there. So, I mean, things are looking you know, really good. We're continuing to monitor um, areas that, you know, we might be a little bit shaky on so that we know where we stand and then we'll kind of figure out whether or not there might be some end-of-the-year purchases that uh, principal wants and needs to do, you know, wants and needs to do. Um, so we'll sort all that out, but I'll keep you appraised as we continue to go through this process. So. That's currently where okay. our projections are for what we stand. So, so maybe at the next meeting we'll have more of an idea of, well obviously we have more of an idea, but there'll be more specific proposals about what to spend it on for yeah. projects in the building? Yeah. And the electrical work I think has already been scoped out sure, to do so to get the boilers out. There's going to be other things in right, so the pipeline. Mm -hmm. They, various, yeah. they TMS or Judy, mm -hmm. um, has sent out to the principals um, end of year Okay. purchasing desires if okay. there is some right. leftover money um, for that kind of thing and that would also fall in the of what we okay. how much money you have yeah. you know each building's sure. different as well so, you know so yeah. seeing what that is and yeah so we'll have information for that but the electrical work will be part of the list we get right yeah and actually i guess the electrical work is underway i understand the yeah. electrical work is underway mm -hmm. but should we authorize the electrical work to proceed yeah we probably should Sort of outside the scope of the original budget. I think you want to have that step taken. Or? I, think I mean, it's part of general building repairs, you know. So I mean, so it falls under general building yeah. repairs yeah. in the budget. Do we have an idea what the total is on that? Uh, Ninety-five hundred dollars. So I mean, we, we've got the money, and we can just you know we'll do yeah. a transfer from salaries to cover. So. Um, this is slightly getting ahead, but similar topic. Yeah, Bob, let's be retired. That's correct. Effective mm -hmm. when? In terms of somebody managing building projects over the summer. Um, so I'm like. looking for the, um, right now it's posted. Um, I'm going to start the interview process in first June 1st yeah. is kind of the, the, the time I have set to begin date, probably the second or third week of July, um, depending on the amount of and then Bob has finished the first week of August. Oh, he is yet to go. Okay, good. Good. That's yeah. what I was hoping so, to hear. Um, yeah. So he's going to take care of most of the summer projects yeah. and get those right. rolling. And that's why he he could have left earlier and he chose to make sure we got okay. the summer projects going. Okay. So that was helpful. Great. Great. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, Judy, we're interrupting you. That's Hello. quite all right. Actually, that's pretty much it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. And you're in a very healthy place, so I'm yeah. not real concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Unless some huge thing happened, but I yeah. didn't see anything on the horizon. So, just a yep. question on the. Um, Knock on wood and say something. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. So, like the. Uh, under Finance Administration Services, I, um, I noticed quite a bit of those are, are still at 100%. I didn't know if that was if there was a reason like you, we pay those later in the month, or, you know, um, cop, copiers and all that kind of thing are still at. Actually, one of the warrants that you are about to sign is for central office expenses being billed back gotcha. to the town. So okay. those will yep. uh, start to, to kick in. And I have not, you know, and I've accounted for those. You know, okay. In, my yep. in your back, yep. your back sheet here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, good.
Anybody else? Questions for Judy? If not, Judy, I'm going to thank you again for shepherding us to this point. Yes. And we're we're gonna, almost there. Almost there. Yep. The finish line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're going to move on to public comment. I'm hearing none. Mm-hmm. We're going to move on to new business items. So, Mr. Superintendent? Sure. Um, the first one is the comprehension. Comprehension. That's. <laughs> you don't have to make a joke on that. Nope. The comprehensive uh, school health grant. Um, so I handed out in front of you, and Kendra, we're going to share this with the group to make five copies of the government. Um, and um, Meg Birch, our current nurse leader, who's a stipend position, was going to come tonight. She was over at the GCC thing, so I don't know if she was going to come over here to talk with us as well. But um, So basically, we applied for a um, a grant for $70,000, and it was um, awarded at $55,000. And, and it was awarded about two and a half weeks ago, I guess I would say. And so we've been kind of going back and forth with the state as to find out why we got less than what we asked for. And basically it comes down to the state read our application looking at Frontier's um, student need, um, uh, students with you know need financial need and SES of Frontier and not the entire district. And we look at the actual entire district, it's actually lower than Frontier's numbers. Um, when we kind of appealed on that, um, they said it was, even though we kind of, both numbers are in there, we didn't clearly specify how our district was set up and mm-hmm. such, and that they were not going to, they went all the way to the top, they said, but this, they're not going to offer us more money. So there is a, that's one of the reasons why there's kind of a delay in getting us to who's kind of being thrown at you um, here tonight. But so basically what we're looking for, this grant would allow us to have a part-time um, nurse leader to take care of a lot of loose ends that are happening with student health services across the district. Um, health services, um, and the scope of them have gone up um, across the district of what nurses are doing and what's falling underneath the, the nursing purview. And I really look at this as a good, a good way to get us caught back up by putting a part-time person. Um, the plan is to have a, con- is to have make virtues the current nurse leader become part-time school nurse, part-time this job, and replace her with a part-time nurse. They're kind of moving there. It's going to be a difficult position to fill, but we're hopeful. Um, and then she would oversee the, um, the, the kind of the breakdown of, um, of what you have in front of you here. Um, if you really look at the scope of services, which is like page three, kind of the breaking down, I won't read through each portion, but um, really looking at um, some of the things that we don't have in place. Um, I guess I'll, I'll say some of the highlights just so um, people understand what we're talking about here. Um, making sure that we're following proper protocols in all the buildings for case management, um, record keeping, uh, making sure that all um, you know, files and um, correspondence going in and out of the school are up to date, um, creating a bridge program for um, students who leave for hospitalization for, for any issue. Um, when they leave, the services they receive when they're out, and when they come back, currently we don't have anything in place for that. Um, provide health education for pre-K to 12, um, using um, trauma and resilient um, informed approaches. Um, a lot of the, um, how to respond to local emergencies and the nurses' roles in that. Um, and then um, health assessments of all different groups, and there's a long list of, as you can see going through there, um, of the different things uh, that are falling underneath that. Um, and so basically, kind of beefing up, in kind of in a general, beefing up what the nurse leader does that we do right now for <coughs> a stipend position. Mm-hmm. Now, there is a hook on this, and this is where I kind of, it, this is difficult to do this in, and I didn't think we'd call a joint meeting to do this, but it's difficult to do this in five separate meetings. So, um, I don't know how we're gonna do this, but it's here in front of us. Um, in the sense of that, the first three years are paid for by the grant, but the fourth year, you're, it's expected that the district, um, and that's the last page, I kind of pulled that page out just to show you, because that is the, the reason why we bring grants in front of the school committee, um, is to, by year four, you need to pick up the part-time position. Okay, so it's, so it's green. different than what was sent out in our materials then? It talked about a four-year grant with three two-year renewals? And then you can renew it at that point. You can do three two-year renewals at that point. It's over a ten-year span. So, okay. So, but the f- okay. So, so the renewal isn't the 
Okay. So, and that's really, that's kind of the, the stickler, and, and that's where we have grants come before the school committee because what is the obligation of the district right. when you sign up on these grants? This grant is clearly designed to give us a lot of money, so you're looking at about 220000 over the four years of it, mm -hmm. and then you're looking at about $40,000 um, that we're going to have to come up with in that fourth year. Is there benefits related to that position, do you think? Because it's a part-time position, but I don't know if there's... If we're Correct. Agreeing. No. Okay. So that's no. where it really... And so right now, the way the hours of, the, of a part-time, of a point five works, um, the hours only go up to 20 if we do it hourly, so it's still right. non-benefit the sub-person one, so um, the nurse leader would continue to receive benefits that they're receiving now. They're already that would be shifted yeah. to part Conway, part um, Frontier on their central office and divided amongst the five, five towns, mm -hmm. including region. So, you know, when you look at, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. we have a nurse leader now. We, we, we have a stipend nurse leader now. So Same meaning that thing. she receives a stipend of $12,000 over the course of the year to um, work outside of the, work during and outside of the school day hours <coughs> to do all of this kind of thing. Okay. And so it really, and so, so you wouldn't pay that 12. We wouldn't pay that 12 in the first it. three years. Right. So then, you're really looking at, and thank you for hmm. making, yeah, so 12. we're really looking at in that final year, it's a, you're making, you're really talking about a $28,000, right. you know, plus the increases and stuff between now and then. But you're looking about twenty eight to thirty thousand dollars in that fourth year to get us two hundred and twenty thousand dollars to do a, a right. lot of oversight and kind of beef up. And then at that point we would look at whether or not we continue right. with the grant. Now they're telling they would continue to award it, but to what level? Right. You know, and if they're gonna award us twenty thousand dollars moving forward, we might say, and depending on how far we can shift our services and because do we need because this is where I struggle with this and I'm being really mm -hmm. honest, do I need a part-time administrator for nurses consistently for the next 10 years. I certainly think we need something now to shift a lot of areas we've kind of gotten behind being, again, as a district, several different buildings, you know, um, they put out fires all day long, they get behind on putting right. together good procedures and that kind of thing. Um, so I think I need, I see the need for the shift. Does it need to be, the state clearly is doing this grant because they want to see us be put in this position be there forever. Yeah, but we and, know. And we may not want to do that. The one thing that I saw that really intrigued me was the, the you know, pre, uh, pre K to four early intervention program to address behavioral issues and, and um, that disrupt learning. And I know, and district wide, you know, there's a lot of good things in here, but mm -hmm. that really is where we're struggling in the early years. Yep. Um, and, what, you know, it's, it's, it's taking a toll on the school and everybody that works here. Any way we can do early intervention is just. I'm thrilled with so it seems beneficial if we could focus in those areas to try and cut yeah. that down. I mean we even went back and forth. I, I think there's a lot of good things in here. We went back and forth and saying could we make it a point four position two days a week mm -hmm. rather than the point five and it really makes it a lot clearer of benefits and that kind of thing. But the, the state has you can see in here on the page two about number two, it dictates that um, under staffing requirements they they kind of they tie you in. Uh, number two, the second to last page. Um, they kind of tie you in of you know districts um, with fewer than two thousand students, and we're at fifteen hundred overall, fifteen five to be more exact, and um, requires a. What? It's here. It's, it's two place. Double side. No. Oh no! What are you looking at? No. Oh, maybe I didn't get one. Oh, okay. I'm I, didn't get it. Right. I was gonna say. Yeah, I, was like, I was looking at this one. I got, I got through what I had to through. Gotcha. So, so I could, could you just explain to me? I'm, I'm getting hung up on the numbers. I was trying to make numbers work. And yeah. Just double checking. Seven hour work day for 96 hours over a 10 month period. Is that 96 hours per month? Seven hours per. I mean, it's just bizarre the way that sentence is written. I can't make any of the numbers work. 385 at that hourly rate is about 672 hours, which is about 67 hours a month, which is about nine hours a week. That's probably 96 days. 
It's a seven hour work day. 96 days. 96, 96, 96 days. days over 10 months. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. 45, right? Because why do you Of course, you picked that up. <laughs> 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 I was just trying to like, yeah, yeah, come out. I couldn't think it come out anywhere. Yeah, you know, just the other number you, you keep mentioning, it's 200 and something. Wouldn't it be just three times 55? Four. Because so we're paying we're get the work but, for the fourth year. We're paying for the fourth year for the position, but we're still getting the money. So we're paying the 38,000 that fourth year, and that number will grow with um, just that. Increase. You mean we're getting we're getting 55,000 for three years? No, nope, we're getting it for four years. Okay. But the that 38, that top line it. item, we yeah. have to we have to pick up the cost the of that. The full cost of that. But and the other I that think, that, that right. Cost. So where does that 38,000 go? It's supposed to shift to direct you, services. You've got to show that it's on your local budget. Yeah. I can't pay for it. No, I understand that. So we're not getting 55000 in the fourth year. No, we are. are. But yeah, but you have to shift. You can't use it for salary. You have to use it totally for the other groups. Direct services. And you, could, and you okay. could say you can okay. shift things okay. around and we okay. could, you know, you can do all that, yes, but okay. so what are you going to shift around in a, right. they want to see you put it on the rolls. Now, okay. And we've even gone around to talk about well, like you can withdraw from the grant earlier, mm -hmm. you know. However, this is a state association, and mm -hmm. you have a relationship with them, and they don't go away. So if you kind of right. if you're burning them on this, you're going to get burned on all of their contracts. I kind of had a, a lot sure. of what if we yeah, do right, this yeah. and what if. Right. I'm just kind of thinking Good. about it with you guys. Um, so the idea is that in that thirty-eight thousand, that number for that salary is based on the current person, half time, part time, <coughs> that current person who would fill that position. Who that we have lined up for? That's how right. we came up with that salary number. Okay. Right. I see. Okay. And so we're just cutting that to 0.5, and then 0.5, the other half for 0.5, she would serve as a school nurse. Right. So, and then you're talking about around twelve thousand dollars we have for a stipend. Currently paying her, we won't use that. Mm -hmm. So you technically, if you save, you know, if you save that, or you actually yeah. are paying for it. Gotcha. Yeah. But, gotcha. yeah. But it does follow on. You are increasing. Staffing, and that's but the hook they're I'm using. Say, but unless I miss my guess, we're going to spend that twelve thousand dollars somewhere else that we're saving. Yeah, correct. We're going to get some. I mean, I could. I miss more. I mean, you could. So what could you do with someone? You could. Well, in school districts that have been down this road and have worked in a couple now that have done that, you know, you have to shift <coughs> the money to somehow provide direct services to kids. So it can be used for, you know, well, what about equipment in, uh, in health clinics, in you know, nurses, for screening, nice um, yeah, all of those kinds of things. So it can, can be shifted. Have software. Or yeah, it can be shifted to those things that are supposedly, okay, yeah. you have to make the link sure. between direct services to kids. And that was a yeah. disappointing, that was a disappointing side when we had the full 70,000, where we, where there was more stuff. Right. So when we cut things, we cut um, <coughs> the professional development line, was probably the largest line we cut, and then we cut back a lot of the other lines, which was stuff like computers and mm -hmm. new software mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And so, um, But the bottom line is we're leveraging money from the state, bringing it from <coughs> Boston back to our district, mm -hmm. which is something we always want to do in Western Mass. To improve our health services. Mm -hmm. yeah. For health services, right. Yeah. And if we could catch that early intervention mm -hmm. stuff. It could save us a lot of money on that, and that's a good point there. And the, and the bottom line is, I mean, my, I guess what I was asking you is that currently we have a stipend. Right. I mean, is it going too far to say you save that money? But do you ever really save money on district? But in the sense, you know, what I mean, do you? Yeah. Right. Do you, you know, do you make a vacation fund like you do at home? You know what I mean? You save right. up so that you can go to the islands. Use it. You know yeah. what I mean? Use it to pay for that position. I mean, you could. Well, you know that if there are certain needs that come up in our collective nursing uh, offices in all four or five schools, that we can do things with it because we yeah. have twelve thousand a year, right. theoretically. But I mean, there's, there's screenings that have to be done. Uh, you know, uh, now that a DPH is requiring this expert screening, you know, in terms of screening kids for at-risk behaviors and all that kind of right. stuff, that all flows through yeah. the nurse's office. Yeah. The, the Department of Public Health has really upped the amount of regulations that some yeah. nurses have to answer to so they don't just answer to the department of elementary and secondary education right. they also they answer to the dph yeah. and so, that so is anybody opposed to this just to cut to the no, chase as long as one, okay. one, yeah one last question would be is the fifty five thousand dollars is district-wide so this 
we <clears throat> we would only have a share of the fifty five thousand and ultimately right. only a share of the thirty eight thousand five hundred. Correct. So of the we, we talked about yeah, that yeah. earlier. Um, if I missed something, pardon me. Right, your share of <clears throat> Okay. Is Deerfield's share of the regional so it's yeah. it's uh, but I mean if the grant is gonna pay for that, I mean Deerfield's share this year the next fiscal year will be twenty eight point three two if I remember the right. percent. So we're talking nine right. ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It seems like a good thing, and then to like put it on our <laughs> reminder calendar for you know check in every year, see how it's working. So and she, then, at the, not only that, but they require you to really report help. back, right? Just make sure that you're making progress. And, and then you're going to so that there's, there's a double accountability. Not only us on this position, but the state is going to make you have to fill out a grant progress report on where you're doing in order to get the following year's money. Right. And so right. we'll be able to see. What we're doing we can now. really track it, and, and then we have to put it on our radar in year three. Right. Going into year four, kind of studying if we're not, we're going to do it in year five. Right. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. so. Um, okay. I I make a motion to <clears throat> approve participation in the comprehensive school health services grant, as recommended by the administration. So that's good. Thank you. Second. 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 Okay. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. The nurses are in favor on board. I haven't polled all the nurses. I mean, I've been working with Meg on this from the beginning. Um, I mean, it really just gives her more ability to help the nurses, so I can't see why they wouldn't be on board. Yeah. Because um, some of the ideas around this is to also free up some of the nurses. Some of that money is to get subs for the nurses on certain days to work together to develop some of these things. So right. some of that is is staff and, and or the having the nurse leader covering the office so they can work on mm -hmm. um, getting things up. So some of, you know a lot of this not some some or even a lot of it is is doing that kind of coverage. So getting time for people, right? Because there's plenty to do. It's the creating of time. Yeah. Great. All right. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that forward. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Bring some sort of money for it. Right. <laughs> um, is the next item something we're going to. Yeah. Deal if we could the push the. Second session? If we could push yeah. B to the end. Okay. Because um, that way, because. Sure. Yeah. And even after the reports, that way. Um, yep. Yep. That makes sense. Media can. They don't have to stay around there's no vote. Yeah. So. Um, Discussion of performance evaluation process for the superintendent and principals. Well, the end principals came off another school parents request, wondering how that works. But how that works is I, that I, the super, all principals, I have meetings with all of them. We go through their evaluations um, that's set by the state. Mm -hmm. We do all that. Um, for the superintendent, so this has been a um, strange year for me in the sense that I started off as interim. Um, I didn't really do a full set of goals kind of running in. The goal, I think, to be honest, was just kind of survive and get things in good shape moving forward. Yes. Um, but I do feel that we have to start, because I'm mandated by the state to do an evaluation process. Um, my vision is that I've seen at the principal's seat watching this occur at school committee, and you guys can looking, I'm your employee, so you can certainly weigh in on this, is that when it's cumbersome, it's not helpful to school committee. And um, when you're receiving huge packets and books of information, um, participation rate in it has been kind of lower than mm -hmm. one would want to see in an evaluation. So I um, was having a conversation with Judy and really talking about what if we can put this, the evaluation online um, through a form where you can go through, click it, click right in the comments in the areas we write in the comments. It's going to tally it automatically because remember there's 25 of you. Right. Um, and so what I want to do is roll out for June, and I have a... Um, I can throw away all my spreadsheets. That's good. <laughs> well, I mean, you can still have your spreadsheets. No, I don't I take away your spreadsheets. I don't want to compile But this is, a, this is a draft that we're, we just started to play with right. of what it would look like in a... Um, you want to see it too? Sure. Join the conversation. You made it. I've got a team. So basically, kind of giving it's almost like a, and I would also say, be, beginning kind of the first year, I mean, my contract actually starts next year. This is me finishing out my interim year, if you really want to get into the nuts and bolts of things. But this will kind of give everybody kind of a practice run through because I don't have goals, um, which are the first kind of the first page of things here. Mm -hmm. um, 
but we can kind of go through and start to familiarize ourselves by doing kind of a practice run through. Um, and there may be areas where we, uh, you know, I think we might want to enter, um, what do we do if we don't <coughs> know? Because sometimes it's like, oh, I have no idea if he right. is lawful and ethical. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you, know, you know, so, and, and, and that's the problem with this, this evaluation. I think you, and I've heard it through the years that to know all this stuff, you'd have to sit by me 24 seven. Um, and you know, some things you, you may be very clear on, some things you may not have seen. How do I, how do yeah. we use this system? Because these are the standards that we have to do um, in order to properly evaluate and get feedback. The other thing that came out of the Wheatley meeting was, it's not just about this, it's about, well, it's just some general feedback. Right. And right. how can we do that? Like doing great here, but we'd like to see, mm -hmm. you know, Blank, you know, um, or I like to see, wouldn't see we. I like to see blank, or just giving constructive feedback in that way. And how can we do that? Minding, mind, being mindful that anything that's evaluating me is an open session. So right. <clears throat> it does give you time to reflect about how I'm doing, but you can't just say, you know, yeah. um, I wish you'd wear a tie to a meeting. That would be open record. I was at Conway last night and they made fun of me for wearing a tie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's why you try to have more meetings in Conway. Right. So yeah. So anyway, um, but hey, I'm looking for thoughts on this. I'm going to try to put this together for the, to get it out in June. Mm -hmm. Again, a, a run through. Give a couple of weeks if you look to stay the bill. So how do we? Um, I mean, it is what it is, and outlined by the state. Yeah, that's what this is here. So how do we increase participation? Because that bothers me every year. Yes. Some people. Just don't do it. They say, "Oh, I don't." I, I'm no, just, I don't. I'm not. And that's, that's our job. You can't. You know, it, it is weird because there are some things I really don't have any idea. But, I think but the, I mean, that's what we're charged with. This is our yeah. job to evaluate yeah. the superintendent. Yeah. I think the idea to put it online might be might helpful. Help. Yeah. Although I don't know, a lot of people seem reluctant to put their names on their evaluations when they submit them to me. They have to. I know. And so, I mean, in the in the superintendents, the, the like the rules of it, and copy of it. I mean, it's a, it's on. I mean, this is it. I mean, it is a lengthy document that really, in there, it basically says if you follow this, it's going to take ten hours a week. Um, I, gotta, I should highlight that. Just page. to compile. The Just data. to kind of get the data. I mean, because if I'm really, I'm supposed to show you how I meet each standard. Right. Um, and a lot of this is recommended. I mean, you do have to report to the state in evaluation. I don't know what happens if you don't report because there have been years. I don't know what happened last year. You know, a superintendent right. left, but right. was there one? I'm not sure an evaluation was done, and I'm not sure the state ever came asking where's right. the evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, as Mary Gibbon just said, there, and you, this is the one of the big, the big three roles of the school yeah. committee is budget, policy, hire and fire me. Mm -hmm. So, um, or just give me kudos. That's right. Fair enough. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> how was it done in the past? Was there, do we call it paper Many form? different paper ways. Form. Verbally? Paper form. Yeah. Paper form. That's the whole thing there was handed out, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you've ever seen, if those of you who've used Google Forms, it automatically takes the question, gives you a, a tally to each question so we can have, you'll be able to see graphically where the ones, and then, um, any comment sections get moved to the bottom and you can have comments on each area. And as it says here, if you do anything, if you do um, anything but proficient, you have to give a comment. Mm -hmm. You can't just say terrible, terrible, terrible and not give me feedback as to why I'm terrible. Yeah. So I should say great, great, great. So happened. Um, so that's the idea here. So I'm, I guess I'm asking for some Again, I don't know how this works with five different. Well, technically, I guess each committee could be. Could be but, but you're group. saying there's a what do you? I mean, you're saying there's a plan now that you're trying to get this online, right? The so plan is to get this online, right. and then give it kind of a trial run in June. Right. Okay. I mean, for, for, for hopefully, your first year. I mean, for the most part, if I'm not doing proficient work at this point for the, on most things, you guys are in deep trouble because you just hired me. Right. Um, but the. But, <laughs> But what will happen is for next October, I will have to have some goals for the year Correct. that'll be approved. And then by next April, these are joint meetings now. So the next April joint meeting, 
I mean, it's kind of a quick turnaround, but maybe that's where we finalize the evaluation to go out in May. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think um, I think having the evaluation done in April, straight out of budget season, is going to be too much on school committee members, and it's going to be too much on... And the contract on, calls for something before April. Your contract. In terms of evaluation. And, and this gives you full... The language of the law also breaks down, like, this is all subject to negotiation of the contract. So there are certain things that you can negotiate in and out and how it's done and, and that kind of thing. And we didn't do any of that within my contract. And, and again, I'm, I think we can have an open discussion of how what's the best avenue to do this. Yeah. Um, well, no, I, mean, I don't think you can, you can hide. I don't think you can hide from a bad evaluation. Kind of I think in the five, five or six years that this has been in existence. <laughs> This has been in existence since the last year of Virginia. Virginia was here, and we went through. This is one of the things that she was like, oh, I've had enough of this. <laughs> we went through two training sessions with the committees, the joint committees, to try and figure out how to fill this thing out. And then she, pre she prepared the first book um, of goals and accomplishments and everything else which was people have been giving us one yeah. and a half inch binders full of materials on how they accomplished all the bits and pieces within here. It's a terribly cumbersome process. It is, it's a lot of it's, work. I mean, it's, it, I don't know if it, it's I was, pretty thought-provoking, I would imagine, for a superintendent to walk. How many did you, have you? Oh, have yeah, you that, yeah. yeah, it's, it's fun times. Um, <laughs> but anyway, but it, it, is, it, it, is the, it is a cross, because I have worked in higher ed, it is really a cross between evaluation and the promotion and tenure process mm -hmm. in higher ed. That's really what this is, because yeah. <clears throat> uh, when I went through promotion and tenure, I had bins of stuff I had to drop off, you know, at the, at the dean's office when my time came. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really what this is, is that, you know, you're supposed to pri provide evidence of things right. that you've done, you know, whatever else. So it's really that's where it is. It's and an the, intersection of that. Right, and the hard part for me in separating it was is the goals were enumerated by Marty and Regina. They tied into the, sta the three standards. Yeah. And so when they came out, when it came time to evaluate, you were trying to plug them in to the standards and evaluate them in association with the standards as opposed to this format. Where you do the, you look at the goals and say, did they accomplish or not? And then you can go through each of the others and provide instances. Yeah, and listen, I've been through this, unfortunately, as a school committee member with a, with a superintendent in a, in a tough spot in Amherst. And mm -hmm. it was, at that particular time, there were people not using evidence based on some of their evaluation things. And so you can put all this in, and still someone can fill it out in the way they want. Right. And so, and so and, and when I looked at this, the one thing I was, also thinking about, gosh, I'd love to put in reminders because, like, you know, uh, you know, safety and operations, you know, that kind of thing. Well, you know, putting forth the key fob system. Well, right. I'm not thinking about that when you're filling it out. Exactly. You'd be like, oh, he really could. We could do more around here. Not realizing that we're moving forward on that, or Little you know, um, capital improvements that are affecting these things, or moving right. forward. So, like, I don't know if you do a reminder list, but then at the same time, <laughs> you don't know. It's like. Then it becomes no. like a lot of work for me to put all this together right. to remind you yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. I don't know. And that's why I'm, I'm struggling with it. And, you know, the, you're right. The whole class talks, you know, you're supposed to get, you know, not supposed to. One of the things you can do is get a training, kind of go through that whole thing, spend hours and hours and hours. And, and I'll just be honest, I chase five meetings a month. You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to streamline this, this process. Exactly. So... And legally, you can collect the data electronically. You just can't deliberate about it outside of an open meeting. Right. That's yeah. the way one can't decision. discuss it outside. Right. Of the right. That's the way one decision, and that's how it came to be done in open session was because the school committee deliberated right. outside of the open meeting. So the one concern I have with it being online is who's controlling. Well, I'm going to change the collection. Looks good. <laughs> well, I know that. Oh, oh, yeah. so, well, so the other thought, the other thought there was whether or not you create a subcommittee from the joint committee mm -hmm. to work on evaluation of the superintendent to make this. I, I, I saw Barry's <laughs> look. I'm sorry, Barry. I, I saw your look. At that. That's how I feel. So no, what I really want to do with this is just let me know how I'm doing. You know, but you could, but you could, but you could, once the electric thing's on, you submit it. You could have um, one or two people, like the chair of. 
joint and, and the frontier chair collect them. Yeah. I mean, that's they can be the old, they old well, they, right. they just have Whoever sends right. it out becomes the owner. Exactly. Right. So they just yeah. have to it's, it's send it out to email so list. So it's under, it's not, yeah. This not is under how us. I was, this Google form was how I was evaluated at the Greenfield Commonwealth Virtual School. So I got a copy from them. I yeah. made a copy of it. And so I have ownership. So whoever needs it, I will pass it along. You can make a copy and then you can. That's great. Rock on. Thank you. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, how I set it up. How I set it up. Yeah. 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 How I set it up is the business about the goals for this year would not even show up in the form because you can set it to what section you want it to go to because gotcha. it's all in sections. So the goals wouldn't even appear this year. It would just need to be edited the following year to, to, put, them to in. put the goals yeah. in. And when when we fill this out, say number eleven, is there a spot to write anything for number eleven? You can like yeah. after yeah, you pick exhibit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The comments oh, right under there's comments comments standards. standards. There's for each standard. Yeah. There's a comment oh, each standard. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. six gotcha. questions. Okay. Standard. So then you can just put the, the in your notes. Put the as it relates to yeah, each the one. item number you're commenting yep. on. Yep. Go from there. And so then <laughs> in your public meeting, you would then determine what the overall. Rating is. Yeah, and I think it mm -hmm. just needs to be simple and to the point. Mm -hmm. If we want participation, you know, people get so busy. And it just, it's a very important part, and they should be spending time doing this. But so again, I guess my proposal is to do something very similar to this mm -hmm. for June, just so people give some feedback yeah. this year, and then maybe. Um, I mean, we can even add something um, miscellaneous feedback, kind of deal that doesn't fit directly here. If anybody wants to have comments, I mean, because I, I, I say things like that because I always think the public is positive. But I guess, yeah, I mean, the whole other problem is if one committee votes me very poorly and the rest of the committees vote me very positively, there's no, there's no legal framework for what to do in that situation. Right. Yeah. Other than I better improve in that one. Just in, yeah, yeah, yeah you, so, you get some knowledge about where you where you're working. Right, that's what I need. It's feedback because yeah. if yeah. there's an area that people feel that they need to be working harder in or um, doing more with, I need that feedback and the public needs to see this. So should we have, are you gonna, is there a way to change the form so that you have a little bubble that is sort of not applicable or, you know. Yeah, I, that I, can be added in. Because otherwise you, yeah. or just actually, the, the form can accept no bubble. Right, my administrative assistant actually was the keeper of the form. Okay, because a lot and of people. So are. she was able to keep track of who in the board was Completing it and sending out the oh, notes. I, you know, hands right. off. Right. And so she just, and then when the time came, she just pulled the pulled the report out and. Right. It off. So I'll add an NA. To well, otherwise, a default position for many people maybe needs improvement because they haven't heard about this area or have done this. You know what I mean? If you're trying, if you don't have yeah. the answer, right. you have to pick one. Right. And it's a yeah. big difference. It's efficient. It's a big difference. Right. <laughs> <But, well, laughs> if we haven't heard about it, it's going just fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll add an NA so that at least you yep. can have honest feedback on areas where people aren't. And people may want, not want to, yeah. It, and I mean, I think like, I'd rather have that than everybody yeah. thinks I'm doing great in the area, but they really don't have yeah. no idea what that area is. Right. Or they're just randomly putting things on. Mm -hmm. But I like, like some of the, I mean, I liked the reminder things. The reminder um, ideas? What? You know, the, the, the general the summary. So I don't need to know about what they have done that year. You've gone to a year. I just think I, mean, I, got, no. I got that covered. I know how many yeah. you do, but but some of the other the things. <laughs> <laughs> but if you some just of come the back other things. Year, that, bulleted highlights. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think say, oh, geez, what did we do to spruce up this building? Well, I do. There's a part of it is I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want people to be reminded because. I agree. I want to do something like that in the summary of different ones because I want people. If I'm going to write I something, show. I want to. Well, if I'm going to be evaluated, I better make sure that people remember yeah. what you've done. You know. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's important. Okay, so I can yes. do that too. So right. I'll, there's no vote or any of this. I'll yep. just move forward. We're going to have a discussion again at Frontier in about an hour, and then. Um, okay. All right. Um, the next thing. Office the central office has changeovers, as you know, um, have been announced that Louise Law um, has retired, and I filled that position with Tim McCarthy, who was the early childhood director, and I think she's made a great fit in that position. She knows the district and understands um, the position, and is going to work great with Sarah Mitchell um, in that position. So, um, and just let you know, on top of that, so I'm now I'm in the currently we're in the process of hiring a new childhood. Early Childhood Director, Director of Early Childhood, 
and we're also in the process of um, we just opened up for Bob Lesko's position. So I just that was just kind of a reminder of people who haven't been following the, the emails on that. Um, and as, oh. as part of that, did you look at all those positions to see if anything could be combined in I any way? I was going to ask that too. That's, what was, that's probably, originally how that got on the list, is that another school member mm -hmm. asked about yeah. whether or not the position was necessary, and needed to yeah. it, that kind of stuff. Um, yes, we looked at that as an administrative team. The amount, the amount that the early childhood director does, and I could even, even ask oh, um, Karen to kind of jump in, yeah. um, they do a lot, especially, in, especially with the uptick that we're seeing with, with special needs and yeah. specialized services for early, in early identification. And, um, it's, it is a difficult, and that's one of the things we're talking about as an administrative team, is that when a student is diagnosed with learning disability at such a young age, it's also very difficult for families. Mm -hmm. And needing extra, extra um, help through the process of just kind of working through what does this mean? What does, a, what does an IEP mean? Yeah. What, does a, you know, what does it mean a separate programming mean? Or any kind of things that fall onto that scale. An extra administrator has been very, um, it's been a necessity in that. Mm -hmm. okay. I think it's even more so, but then also coordinating all the different programs and such as well. So, um, yeah, so that's, I think it is, I don't think there's an area to reduce. Um, you know, there's obviously going to be a shift in, I don't want to say obviously a shift, but there, you know, with people moving in and out, there's going to be some payroll, you know, someone being here 30 years versus someone not, you're going to see some shifts in payrolls and that kind of stuff, but um, there'll be some savings there. Okay. <clears throat> um, something that just you included on your report. All right, going to reports. Can we go to, well, sorry. Just, I'll go right to reports. I was just checking off the thing on your reports with the staffing changes, but uh, go, no, I'll get to it later. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Are you, <laughs> are you done with that then? I'm done. So, anybody got any questions about central office staff changes? No. Okay. Sorry. So yeah, we are going to reports. <laughs> Great. So Principals before me. <clears throat> <laughs> and for those of you guys in here, that Tina was not well today, so she should never come to work. <laughs> All right, so Polly Bath, so I guess I was fortunate enough to have the faculty and staff have an opportunity to join some small groups to discuss Polly Bath, who is an expert in field behavior. Mm -hmm. So she led some nice small groups talking about recess and lunch safety and disruptive behavior related to emotional dysregulation and you know, how to address in the language that we should use as a school um, and some just go consistent um, values and behaviors when working with these students. We also had two full faculty uh, PDs last Friday and Friday before that where the whole school got together and had a chance to have you know, some nice discussions about trauma-based interventions and how to work with this increasing population of students who need these mm -hmm. types of services. So the hiring process, as you know, I'm moving This is back. great that you can report this. <laughs> 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 so, so um, as I discovered in this position, Frontier, and then that position was more to my professional satisfaction, liking. Mm -hmm. So I am leaving the position. Um, currently, Louise Law and Tina are co-chair and committee to um, meet starting next Friday to review applications and then we'll start the process of looking for my replacement. Okay, what did you just say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then uh, other hiring some buildings. So we have had a kindergarten teacher that this committee has selected. Um, they've also selected a sixth grade teacher in the search. They've also selected an instructional assistant for next year. We are still in search of a special ed teacher for the new program that we're hoping to start in the fall. Um, Isn't that been posted? It has been such. posted, yep, we, that has started. And then the last one was the special ed secretary. Um, we're also in the process of that for hiring for that also. So lots of hiring going on. To be completed, hopefully, you know, getting a gym. So once again, the PTA did a beautiful math science day. Um, it's been a long-standing program that they do in the school. Uh, everyone truly enjoys it. Missy Novak and Jen Chambers really organized it nicely this year. We had a lot of local 
people come to the building. We had the reptile show. We had the fire trucks and the ambulances. We also had Adam Strength go from you know, TV News come in to do a whole nice weather activity with the kids. Um, so this is an activity that I'm sure will continue <coughs> years down, but it's a, a great opportunity for the kids to have a whole day in the, the science, which is great. Moving out of facilities, so let's see here, the door, the door hardware. So in all we have, let's see, trying to put a lot of new doors in there. So the exterior doors was planned to have the card access going in. Mm -hmm. So we had center millions, we had new hardware, we had electric strikes that were added to ensure that these doors are all secured for when we move on to the card access. Right. Um, I know that the convergent vendor that Scott Paul and Tina chose mm -hmm. is already with a PDO issued and they're supposed to be starting towards the end of June, I believe, mm -hmm. doing all that. Great. So, I, mean, I know it's got today and that's the, yeah. so really the unrolling of this will be for the next school year. Yeah. So basically, Fantastic. so yeah. we'll have the, the summer to get out the kinks of the program. It, it took six months longer than we thought it was going yeah, to be. It's but, a big, it's a big job. Yeah. It's both Frontier and here. Oh, we're doing right. them together. Oh, wow. So, Great. Lord's so, price, but. Yep. So, so is the building <clears throat> now equipped with electronic door locks? All is, the doors are set up to do it. Uh, set up to do it. Correct. They, this, I mean, I understand the software has to go in place to support the car no, access. The, the I just hardware, wanted to know if the, the hardware is not in place, but the doors yes. couldn't, couldn't right. take the hardware without the, proper right, strikes. without the strikes and without the some of them were closing properly or latching properly. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So all that had to be done first. So the door part is done. That's great. So the moving of the boilers, um, so we did have two high efficiency boiler boilers installed. Yes. Um, it's replacing the very old <laughs> boilers that we used to have. Um, so it sounds like we put two new boilers in and they're keeping one of the old ones in place just mm -hmm. as a backup if that's needed. Yep. We also had our new lights installed, high efficiency, I don't know if you guys see them coming in, you know, that's the new LED lighting system that they put in part of that. Um, <coughs> yeah, so the boilers are all set to go up and running in the light system. Um, moving on to classrooms, lots of classroom activities are happening. Uh, the pre K is brought in the kindergarten again, so we have local authors coming in to DES with a local illustrator, parent illustrator, so doing a whole project. With what you know, what the grandpa, what the grandparent, and really developing some nice family trees and family stories related to that. That's great. Third grade, third grade to the Hitchcock Center. Or sorry, going to Hitchcock Center on May 24th, studying the pond and the ecosystem. Uh, fourth grade is doing an energy unit, uh, testing potential and kinetic energy. Fifth grade with the Bondi's Island, looking at the whole system. I always laugh when, why do we always laugh when they say that? Why <laughs> So who would have thought that would be a field trip destination? Yeah. <laughs> they can come down and South there if they want. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Soon enough. Yeah. There's a money maker yeah. in there. Yeah. 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 We'll start charging. Yeah. So the LEAF program has a special Olympics attractive field taking place next week. It was sadly rained out for last Friday. Mm -hmm. And then we have the young athletes and uh, showcase some of the workers in the adaptive PE. The librarian is trying to do the reading project where she's trying to read out titles that are over 25 years old. I know it's the goal to eventually um, have all the publications being in the classes. Um, so she's following the, the musty, misleading, ugly, superseded, purview, all those things that are essential. Uh, for picking and choosing what books will be read out. Mrs. Durval's class has made a fantastic painting of folk and art flowers during our class. Um, it's supposed to be a display at the Tilton Library. And then Mr. Edgerly with the Spanish, she's doing a lot of work at the Pink Garden in the first grade. And it's a nice Spanish songs and really doing that early intervention with Spanish is so important. I um I just think it's wonderful that um that the book from uh, Jane Trichier was able to be shared and um, two really special 
<laughs> remember, it's really nice to see that, that you're um, using that book that you know, Lou Vincent did for her. So it's great. It's really nice to see that. All right. Thank you much. Um, and you'll be, you'll be here next meeting, too? Yes. Okay. Right. Um, so, Darius, your report. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much a, the same, but let me give you the one thing that we didn't talk about. Um, is that it just, I just got a, on May, in early May, I got a, uh, a thing from the state that talked about um, school choice. I don't and think there was a handout. No, they sent it to me. Oh, okay. So, see handout, though. You said to us, see handout. Oh. So we didn't get the handout about what the changes. Okay. I don't think. Nope, you didn't. The, the All right, so you don't have a handout. So basically, I'll summarize it and yeah. then I'll send it, I'll, I'll shoot it to you the email. Did you have a report that you didn't It's part of the packet. It's a. Uh, it in the packet. We've got one page like this. What's that? So, um, so I'll have to send you the. I think I got the mistake, but basically Desi is saying the new interpretation of school choice is that Sorry, yeah. if you're a part of a regional school district, school choice from the sending elementary schools does not give you an automatic placement in the regional school. Ooh. Oh. And so that, the good news is that that's grandfathered in, meaning so anybody who's currently enrolled in the elementary schools can follow that system, but the new kindergarten class coming in, we're going to have to put that on the enrollment form that says this does not guarantee you a spot at Frontier. So, right. So um, you reapply like that. You have to reapply, you have to reapply so basically you, you can't. Because so, we're two distinct districts. Because we're, legally we're two distinct districts, so therefore, you know, who are we to whatever. So, I, you know, there's different, there's different um, opinions as why that's happened. Yes. Um, one could be that the state wants everybody to regionalize, and so therefore, um, they're trying to use this as a motivator. Two, basic interpretation of law. Three, they're really annoyed with the, all the school choice problems that are out there and they're just going to try to make it ugly. <laughs> I'm going with number three, but I'm sure that's not the right answer. Yeah. I mean, the real impact, though, is I mean, is there going to be a real impact? It's I don't, looking at, the, looking, at the looking at the numbers of students coming up, over the next five years, it's kind of hard to predict. I mean, I can go all the way down to mm -hmm. you know first grade. Our numbers are lower. Is about fifteen people students lower than we were the last ten years. So you know, keeping the numbers where we are at the middle school, um, about and you know, we try to keep the, the incoming class at one hundred and twenty. Yeah. You know, you're talking about class sizes that are coming through at just over a hundred. So right. um, you know, so there's plenty of room. So there's room, and so I, there's no real so. What we're going to try to make sure we get out there that um, that we will do everything. We're, doing, we're going to try everything possible to get students yeah. who are school choice into our in our um, city districts to have that many slots open yeah. as they move up. Um, but that doesn't guarantee them you have to lottery it, don't you? Yeah. Doesn't guarantee you have to lottery it. But you're talking about the only ones we have to lottery is starting with the current kindergarten class right. of no. next year. Yeah. So yeah. who Nine knows? Years to yeah, I mean you basically have well, yeah, six <coughs> years to. Six yeah. years um, yeah. to figure it out, and who knows what's going to change the legislation why in six years. Um, so I'm not so overly right sure. now it's Frontier. I'm not, we're not really aware of it here. Are, how many uh, slots that are that are open every year for people to apply for, for seven through twelve? It's been tight the last couple of years it has. because so we've pushed. Been, yeah. We've been we've, we've had to cap it um, the last couple of years. In so the current eighth grade was capped, but the current seventh grade wasn't. The eighth grade prior to that was capped. Um, huh. I think maybe prior to that, and when they were seventh grade, they were capped as well. And so it's kind of a good thing, right? I mean, we don't want obviously the issue we had here where we had a ton, not a ton. So, right. So we, we don't want to be. We base our number at one twenty. We don't want to be over one hundred twenty because that makes us have sections over twenty four, and we don't want to have sections over twenty four. Right. So we don't want whole classes of you know, one, one or right. eight of kids, right? And then fill in where you can, right? Yep. And that's that's Perfect. the idea. So. Yep. Um, you know, however, it's a good point where this actually may actually protect us in the long run, although I don't see it in the numbers right now going through the next six years, but if you had 130 kids and you had 40 school choice for some reason, you know, there'd be more than Frontier would have to hire an additional teacher in the seventh grade in order to handle the school choice number. Right. Which has never happened. Good. Because it's just the way, it's just the way it, 
I mean, some, there's probably a mathematical equation that works if you have you know, four sending schools that can only have so many school choice slots, you're right. never going to get above that number. Good. Yep. You know what I mean? Especially yeah, with the biggest center. At it. Yeah, especially with the biggest center being Deerfield. Keeping Mon up. Everybody's monitoring it. You know right. what I mean? So you can't right. have these huge, these huge bumps. Right. So good. Okay. All right. um, and then, I wonder how that works. Just as a curiosity, with students that we have in this district in the union that are going between union schools, but they still would be eligible to go to the re regional That's without true. being a school choice. That's correct. They would be. Default, they would immediately no. default. They, off they, off school they would. Books now, right. Right. They would. Right. They do. They would, exactly. They do come off the school choice books. Right. Mm -hmm. They're not considered school choice there. So mm -hmm. that inner union thing. Um, I just kind of give you a summary, and I sent you an email today regarding what's going on mm -hmm. in the Senate. Mm -hmm. But basically, they called it Bloody Monday or Murder Monday or whatever, something like that, in the sense of all the House bills failed for education, basically. And I kind of just give you a listing there. And the only two things that really went forward was increasing Chapter 70 to thirty dollars, which was twenty. And keeping transportation or increased regional transportation to 80% reimbursement, which will certainly help Frontier, but it doesn't really have an effect on you um, here. But right now, there's a whole bunch of different proposals. And I, again, I sent you an email today what's been going on in the Senate next week. It's really, if you hit the first link, it's kind of interesting. You can go down to education, you can kind of open up. I found it was, I thought it was interesting the, the yeah. different kind of bills that are out there. And then there's some major ones, and then there's ones that deal with a playground in Westfield. And like, well, the, you know, it's kind of it's just very interesting. I, I thought I never really the one that struck me was the uh, request for a hundred thousand to study a Berkshire County school district. The Berkshire are hurting. Yeah. Hurting. Mm -hmm. Well, but you also could see that down the road, Franklin County. Yeah. And yeah, just because of some of the difficulties that mm -hmm. some of those yeah, shrinking they're, schools are having, they're trying to merge up there too. Anyway. So well. Um, <clears throat> okay. Anyone? Any I mean, questions? Everything else is written there. Darius, anybody? No? Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to. Nobody has anything else in our regular meeting. I guess I'm going to make the motion to go to executive session. And I guess I'll read it off and I'll do it. Yeah, it looks like we're doing it for two things. So, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 38, Section 21 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non union personnel. Or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with negotiations, excuse me, with non-union personnel. And we're also in the same motion to go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 31A, Section 21.3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. Second. Which we are declaring. Second. Okay. And no. Decisions will be made. There's no vote coming come back those. out. So we'll be uh, adjourned over as well. Okay, no decisions when we come back out for adjournment. Yep, yep. there'll be no votes taken. All right? Sounds good. So I all Trevor McDaniel. I Trevor McDaniel? Mm -hmm. oh, well, it's it's got to be, a, it's gotta be a yes or no, Trevor. Come on. A yes? <laughs> you have to say yes, Trevor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I don't care. Okay. Say it. Yes, David Sharp. Yes, David. Yep. Yes, Mary. Yes? Yes, Karen Mitchell. Okay. Yes, Ken Goodwin. The chair invite myself and Yes, um, and we are inviting and, and uh, everybody who is here yeah. uh, from the administration to stay with us. Okay. So. Thank you.